you know, installed on your VM. Okay, so let's talk about karate and how does everything you know fits together. This is just a background on like what the BDD, Gherkin, and you know, uh, kind of philosophy of development uh, with the quality in mind. Uh, so that most of the things can be automated, um, and 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 you know, uh, the requirements can be validated uh, quickly. So let's talk about where your API test and karate fits in here. So now if you think about, you know, your API or or your web service, the functional test cases, right? Which implement the API features, right? Then you need to write your BDD for your API, okay? When you create your API features or stories, you write your BDD for the API testing, okay? So how would it look like, for example, Right, um, you develop some API, right, on Python, books or something. Yeah. Right. So let's say you have a you have an API exposed for as a for the book service, right? Uh, let me just start a frame so we can discuss about it. So when you create an API, right? Um, API is basically a feature or functionality, right? An API will provide you a consumable functionality right? because consumer, uh, you know, consumes it for some benefit. Right? So let's say you have created uh, API for books. Right? Generally, an API will give you functionality. For example, a books API might give somebody to, uh, you know, functionality to, let's say, add books, for example, right? Or update, right? Generally, we talk about like CRUD scenarios, right? Add, update, delete, or the read or query. Make sense? Generally, when you look at the API, um, APIs provide you typically a current functionality with uh, some uh, few other things, right? But every functionality you see from the business side can be converted into one of these operations on the API side, right? So let's say I'm doing developing an API based functionality and I need to write some test cases, functional test cases, right? So, for example, if I have, let's say, book search functionality, right? So, I might have an endpoint like this, right? right? And then I can say, hey, you know, you can search books from my collection in many ways. Right? So, you can get all books, for example. Or you can get particular books by ID or you can search by author, for example, right? So from business 
uh, perspective, you are providing an API which gives consumer, uh, you know, ability to do different forms of book search. Right. So the feature perspective or API perspective, you are saying uh, that you have a books endpoint, right? With different way to search the books. Make sense? Right. So now, if you have to write test cases for this, right? Functional test cases. How would you write it? Already written it right in Postman available, right? So how do you write? So the JSON file with so basically you yeah. go to this URL, right? Yeah. And then maybe call a get method, right? Get method, push method, right? And then you get some response back, right? Mm -hmm. Right, and then you validate like what, what you got in your response is based on what your query was or not, right? Mm -hmm. This is how you write your API test, right? And then you can automate it or uh, through Postman or some PIO or whatever, right? Now, similar way, if I had to express this test cases in Gherkin or BDD, how would I do that? Right? So let's say, and write something like this, given something, right? It is GWT, correct? Mm -hmm. Gherkin means GWT, right? Given and So given something, when I do something, I will get this back, right? So how do you write the API? It is given. There's no browser window in API, right? right? Are you talking about in a postman or? In the API, right? API is basically a place for computers to talk to each other, right? There's no user who opens the browser and does something, right? Make sense? Mm -hmm. When you talk about web services, it's not for human consumption, right? Yes. It's like between two computers, one computer calls another and does something and then gets the response back. If I have to express that, into something like BDD, right? And say something like given given is a server of server of books book. URL, for example, books URL or server for books, right? And ISBN when, is entered, then when I issue a get method, right? Again, add update is like map to the method, right? Post, get, post, delete, right? If I show get method, then, for example, maybe my response should have some books, right? <coughs> my response object, <coughs> right? Should have some books or it should, status should be 200 or it should have like 100 books or whatever, right? Based on my criteria. Make sense? A list of books, yeah. Right? So I do something like this. If you look at API test cases, they're standardized. Right? Like if you look, look at post, then what do you do? You give a URL, you choose a method, you execute it, you get a result, and then you write the test cases, right? Scripts, right? To verify if your response is good or not. Make sense? Right? I can create the test cases for Postman, right? Like given, I type this in URL, I select this method, right? And if I click on execute, right? In the response window, I should get this back. Make sense? Yes, no? Yes. And then we should be able to exit, automate all of these, right? Using Postman or something else. So would you write given uh, that, and then when I issue get? Uh... When I issue doesn't matter because it's two computers, right? It's not, the user is not involved. It makes things simpler for us, right? Yeah. right? 
even this URL is somebody issues, not somebody, <laughs> is basically if computer issues this method, right? Then computer will get this false back. But what would be the, what would you write down? What would you write down? That's the question, right? And since it is a standard communication, it's somebody has already written down for you that somebody is karate. Okay. So what karate is saying is that it knows like both men how to execute all your test cases. Right? The only thing you need to do is you need to tell it in a BDD way that what it should do. Right? It has certain things to help you. So karate is basically a tool which has automated the whole Gherkin syntax for API testing so that you don't have to do any automation. Okay, I'll show you what it means. What it has done is because not only it knows that you have to do given when then another Gherkin syntax, it also knows what you are going to do or what a computer is going to do. Right? What a computer is going to do in the API testing? It's going to go to some URL, right? It's going to execute some method, right? Either get or post or put or something. It may supply some JSON data. And it will get some JSON data back. You agree? Right. That's what the API does. So it already knows that. Is that instead of you doing this, I'm going to automate this. Only thing what you need to do is you need to give me the proper instruction in terms of BDD. So that the step definitions which we saw in before the break, you don't have to automate that. That is already automated for you. Make sense? As far as you can write a BDD, you don't need to do any automation. Automation is already done for you. Okay? You don't have to automate each step. Steps are already automated. Okay? You need to know how to write a BDD in the right way to do API testing through Karate. Make sense? Okay, so in order to do that, Karate has its own syntax. Karate has its own syntax. So for example, I cannot say given I open the postman, for example, or given I put the URL. It says, we know that you have been the computer is going to hit some URL. So use a keyword URL. Given URL books, for example, when method is get, right? Then status is 200. Simple. If you do that, you don't have to write any automation. Karate will execute that automation for you. Right? So Karate is one step further compared to Cucumber. In Cucumber, you have to take with step definition and automate it through using Selenium or something. Here, there is nothing to automate. You just create your feature file and you are done. Make sense? You create your feature file with your scenarios and you are done. How to write the scenarios? For that, you might have to look at Karate syntax in addition to Gherkin syntax. Okay, so what is the karate syntax? So let's look at that before we write anything in there. Here's an example. So let's say there is some cat service, right? They provide you different cat information, right? So it's a scenario create and retrieve a cat. Now look at given and when then, right? That's, that looks like Gherkin syntax, right? Given URL, HTTP, something, 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 cats, and request is a JSON body, right? When method post, then status 201. Make sense? So when I issue, a particular request on a particular URL, right? Then I'm expecting the status back. Okay, 
If you can do this, you don't have to automate anything. You have already automated your API test. If you run this, it will actually go to that URL. It will submit this request. And then when the response comes back, it will check if the status is 201 or not. And also, if, if there is a response received, it will also match. It will do the verification. Make sense? Okay. So what do you need to do? First, you need to use getting, given when then, right? And then follow standard keywords in karate like this URL, request, method, status, and then match. Right? And that's it. If you do this, it will execute your postman test case directly. Okay, you don't have to do any automation. You just write feature file. What it means is that when you are doing your API development and if you want to apply BDD using Karate, you just create a feature file, that's all. And then you run them. Even a PO can do this. But if PO understands how to implement a story using BDD, he himself can create the test case and find out if the developer has done the functionality or not. Make sense? It's making it that easy. The only thing from the testing perspective, what you need to do is how to use these certain things and how to utilize the syntax, right, in order to match your scenarios. Okay. This is again a DSL, we call it domain specific language. So Karate has created a domain specific language. What is the domain? HTTP, because everything API is HTTP. So in HTTP domain, you have things like resource, request, response, right? So they have created a language around it, which can run your BDD scenarios. Okay, let's look at how you can implement some of that, and then we can go into the, the second yeah. example. Uh, second example, which is this. Mm -hmm. that, um, it's a continuum, right? Okay. So let's say I got this response back. <coughs> right in the response, I'm getting ID. It says, it says, now to this URL, add this path ID. For example, ID is one, then you add ID one here. And then if I issue a get request, I should get by 200. In fact, what it is doing is it's saying, first, I'm going to create a cat with this name. If it's created successfully, then my ID should not be null. Right? I should get a response with saying, hey, your cat is created, he is the ID. So what he's saying in the second scenario is that I'm going to use that ID and I'm going to retrieve information about that cat. Okay, so you can like combine your scenario like this. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that in a bit. So I'm going to go up to here. So this is all. So uh, just a background. Karate initially was created for Java. Written, it is still written in Java. And it was only working with Java before. Okay, so you could only run Karate using Java runtimes and Java IDEs. Now they have changed it. So they made it very simple. So you don't have to use a Java language a bit in order to do Karate test cases. So that's why I asked you to download Visual Studio Code. Okay, right now it has two plugin supports. If you're going to do Java, it has IntelliJ support and then it has a Visual Studio support. It does not have NetBeans support yet. Okay, so we are going to use the Visual Studio part of it, but good thing is now you don't need to know any, I mean, you don't need to run Java or you, need, you don't need to know Java in order to use Karate before it used to be a prerequisite. Okay, so here are some of the examples. Okay, so for example, let's say there is a block site. 
Okay, and let's say you want to get all the blog post, right? Look at the syntax given URL, right? If I issue a get method, then I should the response I should get should have a status of 200, for example, right? So this is prerequisite URL. This is action, which is your method, whether it is a get or post or put or delete, right? And then this is a verification, right? So as a tester, right, what you need to do is this, what you will give in the prerequisite, what will be your action, right? And what you are going to test, make sense? You can write it like this. All of your APIs can be automated and run. Okay. So do all the um, when you say then, mm -hmm. do all the statuses have to like you know be all good numbers? Like, but by two hundred, you mean a success? Yeah. So when you write then, it'll always be and status and a number like four hundred or yeah, you know. So we'll talk about that, the syntax part of it, right? What you can do in, in the 10 part, right? So what we'll do is, uh, let me see where is my syntax page. So before we get too much into here, so let's do one simple example and then we'll touch upon the syntax. So let's go to your VM. Let me see if my VM is going on. No. Let's connect to our VMs first. Yes. And then let's get it set up. Um, so slow. Are you able to connect? Start the VM. And you have already installed the Visual Studio code, right? So Karate is similar to Selenium, right? Is there any extra features in Selenium why people still want to use that? So typically, Selenium is used for the UI-based testing. Karate is used for the API testing. Karate can be used for user or UI as well. Nowadays, they're adding that functionality. But again, you know, it's not a strong point of Karate to be used as a UI testing tool.
But since you know you can do HTTP, that means you can do any UI, like any browser based testing as well. So, same thing with Selenium, you can use Selenium to do uh, you know, API testing, but it will be cumbersome for it. Okay. Here, like if you want to do API testing, you don't have to generally write almost nothing. Okay, so Okay, so the first thing what I want you to do is open the Visual Studio code. So let me just blank this out. So So when you open your Visual Studio code, right, you might be seeing something like a blank screen, right? Right, like this. So first thing is you need to install a Karate plugin or Karate extension for your Visual Studio code. So go here, extensions, and then search for Karate. So go to the extensions and then search for karate. So this, the, the bottom square where it says extension, right? Go here and then click on that. It will then display you search, right? So in the search you type karate and then it will show you a lot of things, okay? The first which appears karate is the one which you want to install. So the install button next to it, click on install. Make sure you're using this one, Karate version 060, and it says publisher is karatelabs.io. There are a few others as well, just, just install the first one. So Visual Studio Code is like an IDE, okay, like NetBeans, etc. And you can use it for like developing many different applications like Python or Node.js or even Java applications, right? So Karate has created an extension which you can use to write your Karate feature files and execute that within your Visual Studio Code environment, okay? So the way this IDE works is that Again, it depends on what kind of project you're working, but you first need to create a folder and then that folder is called a workspace and you point to the top level folder and then all your files will be underneath that, okay? So what you do is, so once you have installed it, go back to the explorer on the top. Whenever you want to go back to your work, right, click on the workspace, right? And it will ask you to, uh, open a folder or something. Okay, so what you do here is once you are here, you, you just say file and open a folder. 
file, open a folder, and then create, create a Karate Labs folder here in your C drive. In your C drive, create a Karate Labs folder and then select it. Okay, so here you can go like this, right? New folder, name it as Karate Labs, and then select it. So all your features file just be here, whatever we use for the labs today. So for some good, are you able to do that? Yeah. Okay. Let me go here. So now on the explorer on the top, it will show you Karate Labs. And it's like a blank folder, right? You just created it. So nothing is that. So far so good. Okay. So now what we'll do is we'll create the feature files for Karate. So the way this ID works is based on the file, the type of file you create, right? Based on the extension of the file, it will pick up what you're trying to do. So for example, if I say abc.py, it will know that you're trying to write a Python code. Okay. Same way, since we have installed the Karate feed, uh, extension, if I create any file with the extension dot feature, it will understand this is a Karate feature file. Okay, so you create the feature files by using an extension dot feature. Okay, so let's create our first file here. Click on this plus, it says create a new file. And then say test dot feature. Just write test dot feature. So far so good. And then here start writing like feature, for example. In your file, you know the Gherkin syntax, right? You first write a feature, right? With the F uppercase and then colon and then give the feature description underneath that right as soon as you do that right you'll see a run command here run link here right so what it understands is you now you are creating a feature file you should be able to run that file make sense right so i can say hey this is a feature for example And then under the feature, we are supposed to create scenarios, right? So let's create a scenario. And then let's enter. You see that as soon as I put scenario, there is a run on top of that as well. What it means is that I can run the whole feature file or I can run individual scenarios. Make sense? So far so good. It says, if you don't know, there is an HTTP example I can give you. You see this HTTP example there? Yeah. Just click on that link. So is this asterisk here? Right? It is actually all the keywords uh, but you can put a wildcard instead of that. But if you want it to be a readable scenario, like the way we created in Gherkin, you can do it like this. Remove this and say given. The first is given URL, this. And request this. When a method is post then status is 200 and match that response.json is equal to this. Okay, so the first two are given preconditions, right? 
a URL and the request. The method is the action you are doing, right? You are executing a post method. And status checking and then checking the response is part of your verification process. Make sense? Right? What are we doing here? We are saying that we are going to test this scenario that on this URL, when I submit this request as a post, right, I should get a response 200 and then my response JSON should look like this. Okay. Also, there is a continuation of that saying given path is this when method is get then status is 200 make sure that in the getkin when you use any keyword you start the keyword with the uppercase either scenario or feature or given or when or and or then everything starts with a uppercase there is always a space between a Gherkin keyword and then any other things. Okay, so given the URL, if I do this action, this is the result I'm going to go back, I'm going to get back and I'm verifying that. Make sense? Okay, so let's run this first. I'm going to run the scenario. Click on run. This is what we are going to do when you write BDD API test. That's all you need to do. You don't need to do any automation. It's already done for you by Karate. So now using this syntax, right, it's going to execute your scenario. Is an internet issue here? Let's see. Just go back. It's going to go by, go back by itself. Because hmm? it's back. Go back to the machine. Oh, you already exited it out? Yeah, so what it did was it in some point machine it did not Retry. Okay, when you run this, you should get this result. So, results you will see in the window down. It says output, and you will see what it is doing. Says, hey, I'm going to run this scenario, which is on line number three. It is making a post request. Okay. Like the way Postman makes a request, right? It is also making a request. And then it is getting a response back. The arrow is important. Okay. This arrow says, this is the request. Incoming arrow says, this is the response. You see, the response code is 200. And then in the response, you get this file. This is the response JSON file. Correct? And then we are verifying. What are we verifying? We are saying the status should be 200. Right? So since the response status is 200, that condition is passing. It says response.json should be this. So this condition is also passing. Okay, so ultimately it says in your feature, I executed one scenario, one scenario passed and zero failed. And this is how long it took for me to execute the scenario, right? So I'll get a report like this at the end. Make sense? Right? So when you write a 
API title test in this format, right? You can execute all those scenarios of the whole feature, and then it will give you a nice report. Okay. So let's understand what the syntax is. Okay, one by one. All right. So online, everybody is able to execute this. A sample scenario. I'm not able to see the JSON output. It says pass, mm -hmm. but it doesn't show me the JSON output like you have. So it says pass, huh? Yeah. Does it does it show the request like this? No. Are you in the output? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. What does it say? Just just success. It says feature test box feature scenario one pass skip zero and pass one skip zero efficiency zero point zero. So only part of the screen I have. Like this? Yeah, that's it, that and back. And this one as well? Yeah. And if you scroll up, you don't see anything? No. Why you would not see that? It doesn't even say that it started the scenario on line number three or anything like that. I have line number three and two lines before that, main, main ones, but that's it. But I don't have the content type and things that you have. Mm -hmm. So maybe I don't know if you have this locked or something like that. My lock is open. Let me see. Try again. So clean that and then try again and see what, what happens. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So let's go back and understand, you know, what all this syntax is all about. Okay. So let's go back to the presentation. So as I said, karate has a certain syntax which you need to understand. It's like like Gherkin, it's not too much, right? But you need to understand the main keywords, like for example, URL. If you want to use variables, how to create variables, right? And how do you verify your content? Okay. So there, are, there is a basic syntax here. So for example, if you want to use a variable in your script anywhere, right? There is a keyword called DEF or define, right? You can use it for creating a variable. So the way you do it is say something like this, given DEF variable equals to value, okay? You can create a variable at any point. Right? Generally, if you start with a variable, it would be in a given condition, right? So you can say, hey, given this variable equals to this, then you want to use that variable somewhere else, right? Then you can use it. So that's a def keyword for that, okay? The other thing is, um, when you represent data, right? Ultimately, when you're going to do API, right, you might, send the data or receive the data. It supports three different kinds of data types. One is JSON. JSON, it will understand immediately, so you don't have to put JSON in the brackets or anything like that, um, or, in, or, or in the quoted string, okay? So JSON, string, and uh, your uh, XML, right? Those are the three supported out of the box in, uh, in Karate, okay? It can also understand the numeric data. So you can say, for example, my variable is equal to 10, and then you can say 10 plus 10 is equal to 20. So it understands the numeric data as well, okay? So it understands string, numbers, JSON, and XML as the native data types, okay? like, uh, like Java, for example, right? So if you want to access JSON, you can access the JSON with a dot notation, okay? Uh, and it can work with XML as well. We'll see some examples of that. 
There's also called something called embedded expressions. So if you want to embed certain expressions, right, you use this um, format. You put the pound key, and then you put your expression inside a parenthesis. So for example, here, what we are doing is in the username, we are saying, hey, we want to embed some expression. So we put the pound, and then in the parenthesis, you put whatever expression. So for example, this will be evaluated. So when I say user.user .user ID, you see the user is here, right? And then the user ID is here, right? So it will take this value and then put it here. Okay, so like in Java, when you have variable, right? You use the variable, correct? So then same way here, if you want to use the variable and get the value of it, this is how you would use it. Make sense? This is most, the most important thing you need to remember about karate. Core keyword like URL. So URL is a keyword in Karate. So whenever you want your API test to hit some URL, you will use the keyword URL. Most of the times you will use this keyword in the given uh, part of it, okay? So you always start with something like given some URL, right? So that will be the precondition. Right, from the Gherkin's perspective. Given URL is a precondition. URL is the keyword in Karate. What it does is, whenever you take any action, whenever you take any action, that action will be taken on that particular URL. Make sense? Right? So in the URL, you specify your whole URL where you want to take an action. Okay? And URL generally remains constant until you change it. So for example, you want to continue with the same URL, you don't have to specify it again, right? You just continue doing your test, right? So you can first execute the first scenario. The second scenario, you want to execute on the same URL, you don't specify the URL, okay? It will keep the same URL and then you continue like that, okay? So that's constant, okay? You can change it and as soon as you change it, then the new URL becomes the constant until you change it again. Okay, now URL can be a string, the whole URL, or you can pass the variables inside that. Okay, so it could be something like this. You want to make host as a variable, right? And you want to pass it, you can do it like this as well. Okay, so URL is important keyword. Uh, let's see which are the other keywords. Path. So in the URL, you have paths, right? So if you want to supply a path in addition to the URL, you can specify a path, okay? So path means you'll be able to supply some additional things with the path. Um, some of the examples, uh, give me something like this. Understand when you do API test, right? You need a URL, right? For the API. And there's also a path element to an URL. Make sense? Now, when to use URL, when to change the path is something you need to understand. So, for example, let's say your URL is like this HTTP. Let's say localhost, right? 80, right? Theoretically, this is the URL where your service is located. Anything after that is a path, okay? But you can specify the path here as well. You can say, hey, I want to hit my books API. So this could be a URL as well. Make sense, right? You can say this is URL or, so what, what you can do is 
let's say you're writing your test case for the books URL. And then in one of the scenarios, you have to add something. Let's say you have to add book ID, right? So you can say that keep the URL same and then add the path, right? Like this, ID. When you do this, what will happen is ultimately both are the preconditions. So it will append this at the end of this. Okay. Make sense? So you have base URL and then you might have some additional paths in some scenarios. In those cases, you want to separate them out, right? You want to keep base URL and the URL and then according to your scenario, you will add the path. Right? So let's say this scenario requires a book ID here, right? Maybe another scenario will require a path like, let's say, slash v1 slash all, right? Just remember that this actually gets added to the end of this before you execute a method. So you can separate a path and the URL, okay? Some people go theoretically, they just keep the URL up to here, Right, and then everything else becomes path. But this is just a programming style. Generally, you want to keep the URL common, and then in the scenarios, you want to add the path as you need it. Okay. The third important keyword from the HTTP perspective is the request. Request is represents a payload which you want to send to the service. Make sense? So if you want to submit something, right? Generally, this would be this would be the case when you want to like update or create something, right? In the post, you want to submit something, right? You want to create a resource, right? So where will be that uh, uh, payload be, right? that you specify in the, inside the request. Request basically is the payload, right? So in the postman, right? When you do post request, right? What you do is go to the body, select JSON, and then you type the JSON, right? That JSON you power put in the request here. Make sense? Request means what is a payload for your service? You know what is payload, right? Payload means you submit to the provider, and then provider captures that information and does something with it. Maybe it will create a new book for you or do something else, right? And then it will give the response. Now, this request could be very bulky as well. You know, sometimes it might take, you know, it might have some, some records of thousand fields, right? So in that case, you're writing that into a scenario uh, may not be a good idea. So what, Karate allows you is to read the request from a file. So you can put the JSON into a file and then read that file as part of your request. So it will read your content from a file and submit it to the URL. Make sense? Right? So you don't have to like type something somewhere. Right? You can just create a file and then say submit this as part of my request. Right? So request is the payload. Okay. What else? Method. Method is simple. This is your action, right? It supports all the HTTP methods, right? Like get, post, put, delete, patch, options, head, connect, and trace. Typically, when you're doing API testing, you will be using the first four, right? Either the get, post, put, or delete but you can use other keywords as well if you wanted, okay? And then the status is the response code back, which you get it from, back from the HTTP, right? So method is for invoking a method. So it's part of the action, okay? So when, in, when you say when, you can say method and then which method you want to execute, okay? And then you will get the response back. One of the quickest way to check if your request succeeded or not is by checking the HTTP response code, right? So if you want to check the HTTP response code, you will check a status. So it's a keyword called status. 
it will compare to whatever you are expecting. So for example, if I say my standard should be 200, then you provide 200 as the match for the status. Make sense? Right? It is kind of a short way or, 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 or quick way to check your response code. There are other ways to check your response code as well, but this is the quick way of ch checking that. Because most of the time, that's the first thing you will do with the API testing. You will check the status. And based on that, you will say your test case is passing or failing. Okay. There are other few other things. There's a keyword called parameter. Parameter is for specifying any parameters which your request expects. You know query parameters in the URL? Right? So if you want to specify the query parameters in the URL, you will use the param keyword or parameter keyword, P-A-R-A-M. The way you specify is you provide uh, a key and a value. So parameters are always key and value pairs. So you can specify those as part of your request if, if your URL needs it. Okay, this is optional. Okay, if your URL needs it, you can specify those parameters. Okay, so for example here, right? You have a URL and you are, uh, you are passing a query parameter ID equals to 34. And then you are, you know, issuing a get method. Okay, so what it will do? Again, you can see it is part of the given. So it will, it will reconstruct your URL like this. At the end, it will put a question mark and it will say I ID equal to 34. You can directly put this as well. You don't have to specify the parameter. Okay, but sometimes, you know, this will be a variable, right? So it's difficult and not readable to do it here. You will specify it here. So that is optional. You can either do it here directly or you can create a parameter like this. And you can add, add more and more parameters. Let's say you, you want to pass two parameters, you can have another end and put, put another parameter there. Okay. Uh, parameter you see. Uh, okay. So now let's do a couple of things. So Let's start using this so you will know how to, uh, you know, uh, create the scenarios with this. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the web service which you guys created, right? The books one. Mm -hmm. And let's test that with uh, karate. Okay. And that way you will understand how to use this keyword and how to do other things. Okay. So let's go back to our. Uh, RDP. Okay. You know how to run your Python code, right? We're going to go to IDLE. Do you run from IDLE or directly? Yeah, so come on, drone. Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to open the web service you guys created, right? In the web service folder somewhere here that I know. See that. And then I'm going to run this model. Okay, so far so good. Basically, I want you to start your web service and then let's test it using Karate framework. Okay. Let me see the specifications of your service. So if you look at your web service, right? You have a get method, correct? Which returns an HTML. And then you have the books, right? So this cat call returns all the books. This cat call requires one parameter. And this is a 
post call and we will delete call. Okay, so you have all the all the service things. Okay. Good. So let's try with let's start with this. So you have the books API, right? So your URL for the books API is this one, correct? API v1 resources books all. Right? Yeah. So let's say I want to test that using a BDD and karate. Okay. So first thing first, let's create a new feature file. So go to your karate labs, click on new file. Okay, and then let's uh, let's call it books dot feature. Okay. Now in the feature, I'll write you know uh, books API for creating. Editing. Okay. Uh, listing books, right? That's what your books API does, right? So you can create a book, you can delete a book, and then you can list all the books as well, correct? Okay. So the first scenario is going to be uh, checking for all the books. Okay. So let's start here. Let me see if I can do that. So let's say given URL. And what is your URL? It's going to be like this, right? HTTP localhost, correct? Yeah. You're running on your local machine, right? Okay. On the VM. On the VM. Yeah. Right, but, yeah. but it's running locally, right? So it would be local host, correct? No, you can use the URL. Same thing. Okay. If you want to, if you are used to that, you can do one to seven dot zero dot zero dot one. So one twenty seven zero zero one is basically a local host. Okay, and then let's see what is the URL here. API v1 resources books all right. We're testing this one. Okay. Okay. I'm going to add that. Right. So we say given URL this. Now I want to check the get method, right? I want to get a list of all the books first and test it, right? So I'll say when method is get. So we'll say man when method get. So on this URL, when I issue a method get, then, right? If it is successful, it should give me a status code of 200, right? The status 200, right? So given URL, so you specify the URL, when it's an action, when I issue method get on this URL, so when method get, then verify that the HTTP response code is 200. Make sense? Let's try to run this and see what happens. If you click on run, oh, I have a mistake here. So now, if I look at my output, right, it's uh, it's issuing this get request. You can see on the local host, and then I'm getting a response back, which has three books. Make sense? It's an array, JSON array, of three books. It says your one scenario. It is passing one as zero failed scenario. So far, so good. This is the simplest of the API test you can write. You say given URL this when method is get 
for example, then status 200. This is my sanity testing, right? It's my API working properly. Make sense? Right? So this is what you need to write as an API developer, oh, sorry, API tester using this BDD syntax. You just write it like this and then run. It will tell you how many scenarios passed, how many features passed, and everything you can get. Right? So far so good. Okay, so now let's see what else you can do. So right now what we are saying is that, okay, I tested, I'm getting the response for 200 back, which is good, but I'm not verifying a lot of things here, right? Now let's say I know that based on my test setup, it should return me three, four, three books. How do I verify that? How do you verify that in Postman? Assertion. You have to write an assertion, right? So you have to go to the verification, right? Test, then you write assertion, right? And you write some JavaScript code, right? Make sense? So you, you extract the JSON and then uh, do the count and things like that, right? So similar language is possible here as well, okay? So whenever you want to do any assertions in karate, right? You have multiple options. You can use the keyword assert, or you can do the match, okay? So when you want to do a match, you can do a match like this. You can say, hey, then, match. What do you want to match? A response, a response is also an object. So before I do this, let's remove the match. Let's say you are just doing a sanity testing. And you got a response back, and you want to see what is in the response, right? What you can do is you can use the print keyword, and then say, hey, whatever you want to print. Let's say I want to print response. This is like a debugging, right? In Java, when you do, when you want to check out S out, right? System out print line, right? I want to check what is the in the response. So you use the keyword print. You say then print response. Then what it will do is it will print the response in the output and you can check it. Or else you can put end also there, right? You can put end here. So for example, I can say, okay, let's say if I run this, right? If you see as part of the print, this printing output, right? It has got three books here, right? Correct. Yeah. So let's say I was expecting three books, right? I checked, sanity test is fine, but whenever I run this automated way, right? I cannot be there to check, right? I need to put that in my verification, right? So to do that, you write something like this, you say, and match. What do you match? You know now there is a response, right? Object which has everything. You say response equals to, and then you can put the conditions you want to check. Here, here not you're only checking response exactly as is, but you can put conditions as well as part of your response checks, right? So what it means is let's say, I am expecting array of books. Right? I am expecting array of books. I can say check that uh, the response is an array. Maybe I don't think you need to put here, but let's just see. Okay. This will be open. You can do a check like this. But here, I want to check that response is an array, for example. Right? So now, right, run the scenario, right? It has to check this as well. Right? And based on that, it will say it is passing or failing, right? 
So it is still passing. That means the response I have got back is an array. Right? And I can see that it is an array, right? It starts with the square bracket, right? So now what I'm saying is that not only when I call this URL, my status is 200, but also it returns me array of books. But I, if I want to say like exactly it should have only three books, right? I can put three here. So now what I'm saying is not only check it is an array of books, but it should have exactly three books when I call this. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So now, if I check this, so verification is important. So you, so that's why I'm spending some more time on that because as a as a QA, right? When you do automation, you you want to put all the verification so that when you run it automatically, right, it will check for all those things, and then based on that, your functional test cases pass or fail. So you can see if it is still passing or failing. So yes, it is still passing, right? Let's say I put five, saying, hey, I'm expecting five books. Right? Let's run this. The line should fail. Should fail, right? Saying, hey, I don't have five books. Yeah. Right? This is match failed. You see here? And it says exactly which match failed. Right, it says, I don't have five books. Make sense? The actual length is three. So I'm expecting five, actual length is three. So it's going to fail one. Make sense? But here we are right. It's not like starts with zero, so then we have to wait. But by that means we have two. Mm -hmm. What? Because it's an array and we have three books. Yeah, so we have array of three books, books, right? Yeah. Zero, one, two. Mm -hmm. It's not checking the ID. It's saying you have three books in the array, right? Oh, okay. And this oh, that's just for the ID. Oh, yeah. Right? ID doesn't even know there's an ID there. What we have checked right now is that what is the size of the books, right? So, for example, when you set up your test data, you will set that you will be setting up some books, right? And then you will call this. So you know how many books it should return, right? If it is more or less, then you want to fail that. Make sense? Okay. So this is one of the kind of checking you can do. Let's say I want to check what is inside that. Right? Let's say I want to check that, hey, the, the book which, or which is here, right? For example, right? let's say first book's ID should be zero. Right? How do I check that? I can say something like this and match. It has a native support for JSON, right? So you can say in the response, you are going to get three books, right? If I want to refer to the first book, I can say by the array index response zero dot ID should be equal to zero. Make sense? You can put a match like this. You can say response, and from the response is JSON, right? Array. So I want to extract the first element from the array. So I'll say zero, and then say, it. and then I want to access a particular field inside that. So I can put a dot notation and say ID should be zero. Make sense? Right. Let's run this and see if this is, oh, but we are going to fail yeah, this. Fine. Yeah, I need to fix that. Let me fix that as well. So now I'm checking not only it should have three books, but the first book's ID should be zero. I can do the same thing. First book's title should be zero, right? I can also check all the books if you want. Right now it is passing, right? It's saying, hey, everything is good. Right. What if I want to say that the book's ID should be 0, 1, 2? You can check that as well. You can say things like this and match response. I think you want to check everything is a star. Dot ID. Right. 
right? So we can say contains zero, one, two, like this. So it has its own syntax. It's right? just like database. Yeah. So saying, hey, match response, extract all the IDs first and see that all the IDs uh, are in either zero, one, or two. Make sense? So it's very rich in expression matching. So you can do any kind of verification you want to do on your data, it can do that. I can also do schema validation. What it means is I can say that, hey, you know, if it is returning a book, book should have an author, it should have a title, it should have this, it should have that, or you can check that as well. Okay, so I can do something like this. Let us see if I have the syntax right. So match each response means I know the response is array. So I can say now check each each element, each book, right? Like this, match each response with what? With some schema definition which I am going to give in the JSON format. So watch something like this you can do. You can say, hey, for example, if I want to say that it should have an author, right? So I can say something like this, author. And then I can put a kind of schema validation like this. I can say, hey, author should be present in each of my response elements. What I'm checking after the pound, present. Its author should be there for each book. Okay. I can also do like this. I can say that ID for each book should be a number. ID for each book should be a number. Make sense? Title, right? for each book should be a string, for example. You can do variations like this. Right? And you should do this. Okay, because that's the key thing a QA does. Right? Not just checking the status, but all the verification so that if there is a problem, right? It, your automation can test can quickly identify. But look at the syntax perspective, right? Given, which is basically your precondition, typically you will provide a URL and some request with that. When is typically a method, either a post or a get or delete or whatever. Then is all your verifications, status, matching something. But as easy as that, given your URL and request, right? When your method, then all your verifications on the response. If you can write it like this, then Karate will take care of everything else. Make sense? Let's say, let me run this first if everything passes. So there is an error. So match each equals. Okay, so that's problem one, zero. So Author present ID number title string. Oh, it has more keys. Okay. I think we did not give the other two keys, which is yeah. published here. Yeah. Let me see if I can do just a contency instead of. So 
that's why I want to always do all the three things. Good. See, I don't want much exactly. I can say, hey, it should contain these three things. It might have more things, but that's okay. You just want to I just want to verify these three things. I say just a product contains. If you do equals to then it has to match everything. Okay. So there's a very rich support for this. Okay. The thing is like when you start, right? Start with just two or three things and then build up your walk -in. On this, right? There's a lot of syntax. I'll give you, I'll provide you the link to that where to look for the syntax. Okay. But typically, this is what your API test case will, case will look like. Okay. Let's do one more method, the post method. For example, now let's say I want to create a new book. Right. So there's an API for that, correct? You have, yeah. so you have a post API, right? Where you specify some JSON file and then it will create the book, right? Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's try that. So let's create a, another scenario. So let's say scenario number two. So the scenario is done. Now you type scenario. Okay. So let's say given URL, is your URL different? Okay. API given resource books, API resource books only. Okay, so let's try it again. So this is the URL for your post method, right? Now when you do a post, you have to supply the request, right? The JSON body of your book, mm -hmm. correct? Do you have the structure of that somewhere? Like what you're supposed it's to It's in the forum. Okay. Or it might be in the postman as well, right? So, yeah, it might be. So I want to submit some JSON file, right? I want to just submit some JSON data with that, right? So that will be, payload will be a part of my request, right? So it's a URL and then the request payload. So when you type your, Scenario, you say given URL. Yes. And request. And then let's see if we have something on the post one. So we have one book. Like this, right? I'm going to take this and put it here. Right. So you can create a whole JSON like this. So that is a line oriented, right? So I cannot go beyond one line. So you can put the whole thing in a single quotes, right? Because within this, you have double quotes here. It's a request like this, right? And you want to post this to create a new book. So now, I want to issue this, right? It's a given, you are this, and my payload is this. Then I want to invoke post method. I'll say then method is post. Make sense? So when I do this, it should create a new book, right? Yes or no? Yes. Right? It's similar to this. You can compare with the postman, right? In the postman, what you're doing? Given the URL this, post your request is this, right? 
the method is post when you send, right? It is like this. Even the URL this requested this method is post, right? Sorry, when method is post, right? Then again, status should be 200. Make sense? So if my book creation is successful, I will get 200 back. Correct? So let's try this out. Let's see if this works. So if you want to just test the post scenario, you just click, click on that scenario. And it has an error. This is 400. Why? So it did not attempt to load JSON data because the request content type was not okay. So what it is saying is that if you want to submit this, right, you should have a header called content type set to application JSON. Okay, you might not have realized that in Postman maybe. But when you do this, like in the Postman, you see the headers, right? It should have a content type, this one. It is expecting this. Okay. You know, HTTP header, right? When you specify authentication details and things like that, one of that is content types. So some, what, sometimes what happens is API provider says, first you have to tell me what content you are sending me and JSON or XML or something else. Then only I'll be able to process it. Since we are not saying what we are sending, it doesn't know we are sending me JSON or XML or string or whatever. Right? So it is saying that, you should set this header. Okay. So what you can do is there is a header keyword here. So you can say and header. Just set it like this content type. So you don't need this. And then say application JSON. Okay. So this request requires a HTTP header. So you say header and the value. Header is content type, value is application JSON. Means I'm sending you a JSON, right? So my request body contains a JSON. That's what it is saying. Let's try this now. Should match not found for header content time. Are you talking about the match? I don't know if it makes a difference, but in my URL, I wrote uh, after like 127.0.0.1. Then colon 80, and then it works. No, I think it is saying that the method match not all, which is interesting. Something wrong here. Why it is at this point? So it's post. I see, I see the, the quotation, quotation mark after the request. Is that an error? No, no, the error it is, it is, it is complaining about this. And header content type is equal to this. This is node step definition found match for a match found for header content. There is a problem with the syntax looks like. Give me a second.
So normally I don't put values like this, but let's try. Sometimes it is picky about the equal sign. So, yeah, you have to be picky. So, one thing to remember in karate when you put an equal sign, you need to put the spaces around it. Both sides. Both sides. Okay. Whenever you put an equal sign, make sure that your space is on both sides. Okay, sometimes because it it can it considers this one as a single word otherwise. So it doesn't understand there are two parts to it. Okay. But now if you see, right, what it is doing is it is doing a post method here and it is showing you the body which you are submitting. Right, and then uh, it is saying success is true. Right, make sense. Right, so this is how you can do post request now. In our case, your know, request payload is not that much big, right? You can put in one line. Let's say somewhere like you're creating this is some product and it has like 200 fields. You have to submit that, right? Writing here, it will be difficult. So what you do is you can create a file, put your content there, and then post that content from the file. Okay, so let's try that out. So what you do is you create a new file here saying hey book.json and then let's copy this whole json into the book.json okay. and here you can format it okay so let's let's remove this you can create a JSON like this, nice JSON. Okay. Let me remove this. Okay. So it could be any length, like 200 lines, 500 lines, doesn't matter. Okay. And then let's go back to our feature. And then in the request, you can say read. So you call a function called read and specify your file name. For example, book.json in this case. Okay. And then you can run the scenario. See, read is a function in karate, and then you specify a payload. So typically when you're tester, right, you'll be keeping your data in a separate file, right? So this is how you do it. You take the data from a separate file and then inject it here. You can do the same thing for your verification as well. Let's say you're ver you are verifying some big JSON, right? You can say match response equals to read that JSON file. It will match the response with your JSON file. Make sense? If you run the scenario, it should read it from the JSON and then do it. So before we conclude for today, I want to show you one last thing, which is very helpful. So what I want you to do is like once this is done, right? So what happened? Bad request again.
So anyways, the one thing what you will do is, once you run all of these, right? So let's go back to our feature file and run the whole feature. You see here, instead of running individual scenario, you just run the whole feature. So let's say you have written a user story and scenario and somebody is verifying if your user story is passing or not. Just like with Java, with the Selenium one, you need to do the unit. Yeah, sweet. Right. Yeah, sweet. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it will run everything and it will create a nice HTML report. If you go at the end, it will show you an HTML report link. So do control click on that and it should open the report in your browser. You can see it like this. When you're saying your feature is failing because my second test case is failing, right? You're saying past one scenario, failed one scenario, and total scenarios two, and total time taken this. You can click on this, and then it will tell you exactly you know, what are the scenarios, which lines it executed, which lines are passing, which lines are failing. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Actually, everything is fine except this one, right? Because I added a file. And I added a book. My first test case is failing because now I'm, I was expecting three. Now it is returning me four books because I added a book. Makes sense, right? But this way you can get a very nice report. Okay. And then, so for example, the way you will do it is like when you automate it, right? You can put as part of your CI CD and say, hey, run this uh, feature at night, 12 o'clock. In the morning, when you come to the office, you just check out this report. It will tell you which one's passed, which one's failed, right? And this can be created as part of your CI CD pipeline. So you can put this in Jenkins, everything, and then it will run all the features in Jenkins, right? And then this can be stored in Jenkins as part of your build. So if any of the scenarios fail, your build will fail. Make sense? All right. So what I will do is, as I'll, uh, I'll post some homework for you so you can check the delete method and then couple of uh, the get methods. The second thing I want you to do is go through the uh, syntax page of Karate. I'll give you some exercises so you can look for certain uh, you know, verifications which you can apply. Make sense?